Um, all right. Awesome. Unit three notes. All right. Let me get my uh, Zoom going here. Let me share. And we'll grab these. All right. All right. So, uh, unit three uh, is where we're going to start today. Um, so this is on polynomial functions, and then also at the end we're going to get into rational functions. I think you guys did all of this um, last year a little bit, but kind of like always, we've seen this, or not always, but a lot of the stuff we're doing this year, we're going to take what you learned last year and kind of revisit it because uh, I know it's always easier to kind of the second time around, and then we'll, we'll take it up to an, an, a higher level. Um, all right. So... What do we got here? Uh, some vocab, uh, a lot of vocab here actually, so we can go through that to start. So a polynomial is a function with one or more terms with positive integer powers, okay? Positive integer powers. So um, we can give an example here. I'll say P of X, P is for polynomial, equals uh, 2X squared plus um, one half x minus five. That's a polynomial. Wait a minute, Mr. Barry. It says positive integer powers. You have a one half in there. Well, I do, but is the one half the power? No, the one half is the number multiplying in front. Does anybody know uh, the fancy math word for that number multiplying in front of a term? Put it in the chat. Fancy math term, number multiplying in front of a term. Coefficient, says Brian. Absolutely correct. Good job. Okay. Um, awesome. So another example, um, or let's do an example of not a polynomial. Okay. Uh, and so that would be f of x equals um, x to the 1 half minus x to the negative second. So that would not be a polynomial. It is a function, but it's not a polynomial, okay? Uh, actually, both of those terms aren't working for us uh, because one of them is not an integer and then one of them is not positive. Okay, awesome. All right, moving on here, we have end behavior. End behavior is how the graph behaves at the ends. That's a good name for end behavior, right? Um, and what we mean by the ends is at the far left and at the far right of the graph, okay? Those are the ends. It's like what's happening when it starts. And remember, the starting point is the furthest left we can see. What happens at the end, which is the furthest right, okay? All right, next up we have zeros. And the, the alignment's a little off here, so I'm going to just point an arrow right there. Um, so the zeros also known as roots or x-intercepts. So we have kind of three different words to, um, to describe zeros because they are so important here. So just kind of have those, these other terms in your mind as well. Why do we have three terms to describe one thing? Well, it's kind of like, uh, did you guys know that the, uh, the Inuit people, they formerly called Eskimos, but they don't like to be called that, the Inuit people, that like uh, native uh, Alaskans and Canadians, they have like 20 different words for snow. Why do they have 20 different words for snow? Because snow is an important concept to the Inuit people, okay? And you can imagine living up there, it is. Um, so they have a word for like slushy snow, they have a word for like uh, the pat snow, they have a word for the powdery snow. Um, they have all these different words because it's very important to them. So for math, zeros are very important for us. So we have a lot of different words for zeros, okay? All right, next up, uh, oh, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, next up, we got a factor. A factor is a parentheses that a polynomial can divide into. It helps determine the zeros. Okay. Next up, and this is going to be very important for what we're doing first, is the degree. 
the degree is the biggest power of a polynomial in standard form. Okay, standard form, it's the biggest power. Um, what is standard form? Let's actually define that. Standard form is with no parentheses, parentheses, powers in order. No parentheses, powers in order. So when I wrote my p of x up here, the 2x squared plus 1 half x minus 5, this is in standard form. There's no parentheses. I have my second power first, and then I have my first power. Then I actually would call this the zero power because the x to the zero is, is back there. It's kind of invisible, but it is. Um, so this is standard form, okay? Now, this is as opposed to factored form, okay? And we're going to be working a lot with factored form, and there's nothing wrong with factored form, but just know that factored form is not standard form. Factored form is when we have a bunch of parentheses, okay? Um, and once again, that's going to be very useful for us. Um, but it's not standard form, okay? Now, we can still determine the degree in factored form. If it's in factored form, we must add all the exponents of x, okay? So we're going to see some examples of that, okay? All right, local extrema, we actually talked about last unit, and so we're still going to be kind of looking at that a little bit, not quite as much, but a local max is a peak or a local min is a valley. You guys may remember those. Uh, it's a point on a graph with its, within a certain viewing window. Um, it's also a turning point on the graph where it switches from increasing to decreasing. So you guys probably remember we talked about that quite a bit last unit, okay? Okay, so next up now we're going to um, talk about finding end behavior. Okay, finding end behavior. So this is very important for us. And so there's two things that are going to determine the end behavior, okay? We're gonna have to make two different decisions. And based on those two decisions, it's always gonna be in one of these four boxes, okay? So whenever we are kind of deciding this, we're always gonna look at one of these four boxes when it asks for end behavior. The first decision we make is whether the degree, which remember the degree in standard form is the biggest power, is even or odd. So that's what we're looking at for the biggest exponent. Is the biggest exponent even? or is the biggest exponent odd if we are in standard form, okay? Next decision we're gonna make is the if the number in front of that, which we call the leading coefficient, so the number in front of the biggest exponent is positive or negative. So obviously we don't need to decide whether the biggest exponent is positive or negative because we said the exponents must be positive, right? But um, with a number in front of it may be positive or negative, okay? Okay, so if you look at those two things, there's kind of four things that can happen here. Even degree positive, even degree negative, odd degree positive, odd degree negative. Can anybody think of another combination of those two decisions? I cannot, okay? So we have to kind of know then what is, what's the end behavior in each one of these cases, okay? So let's start with this one, even degree, positive leading coefficient. So for example, we have here y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 3. Really quickly here, let's go ahead and identify the degree. What would be the degree on this one? Let's uh, go ahead and type it in the chat. What would be the degree on this first example, 2x squared minus 4x minus 3? the biggest exponent, if it's in standard form. This is degree of two, very good, and Christine, yes. We see that one has no parentheses, so we know that that one is standard form, and therefore the biggest power, the biggest exponent on that one is two, and so it's degree of two. Now this next one's a little trickier. The next one here is has parentheses, so this one is in factored form, okay? It is in factored form. So in factored form, we do not look at the biggest exponent. In factored form, we add up all of the exponents of x. So how many exponents of x do I have here? Well, this first parentheses, I have three. 
The second parentheses, I have five. I do have a number out front, but there's no X out front. If there's no X out front, we don't have to count the front here. Remember I said the um, add up the powers of X, right? So there's no X out front. And so this one would be a degree eight. Once again there, we got three plus five gave us that eight. Okay, now if we are, so would you agree then that both of these are even degree? We got a two and we got an eight. And then also both of these have a positive leading coefficient. The number in front of both of these is positive, okay? And so anytime this happens, the end behavior is gonna be up to the left and up to the right. If we're drawing a graph for this, which we will be, I would draw an arrow going this way and an arrow going that way, up to the left, up to the right. That's the end behavior. Now, what's it gonna be doing in the middle there? Hold that thought, we're gonna get to that, okay? Cause that's really gonna vary function to function. But for all even degree positives, whether it's second degree, fourth degree, sixth degree, eighth degree, tenth degree, okay? We know it's gonna end up going up to the left and it's gonna end up going up to the right. How do you remember this, okay? Well, I always think, think about degree two. Like, that's a parabola, right? I feel like most of us, with all, we have a lot of experience with quadratics, with parabolas. I feel like most of us know that if it's a second degree, if it's a parabola, if it's a quadratic and it's positive, it goes like this, right? Up and to the left and up and to the right. That's the shape, that's the end behavior of the shape of the parabola, correct? And so what I'm saying is, if you know that about the parabola, then you know that about any even degree polynomial, okay? It's all the same as that. Once again, when we get to those higher degrees, it's gonna be more complicated in the middle, but the far left and the far right are the same as the parabola, okay? Now, one more thing we need to do here, okay? We need to translate the, these words up to the left and up to the right into some fancy math speak, okay? I know we all understand what up to the left, up to the right means, but we're gonna be asked on WebAssign to translate into this fancy math speak. Let me show you, okay? So <clears throat> up to the left, okay? I'm gonna do that one first. What we're gonna call that one is we are gonna say y goes to infinity and goes to, we use an arrow, as x goes to negative infinity. y goes to infinity as x goes to negative infinity. It looks a little weird at first, but when you really think about it, it actually matches up with that description of up to the left very well. If y goes to infinity, what does y goes to infinity mean? Well, y is up and down, correct? And if, if I'm saying that y goes to positive infinity, it makes sense to me that that means up. As x goes to negative infinity, we know x is left and right, so I know x going negative, means to the left, okay? So, and then let's do the other one now. This one says up to the right. So up would still be y going to infinity, but now we would say as x goes to positive infinity as well. So y is going to positive infinity as both x goes negative and x goes positive because y being going up is the same either way but I have one of those now meaning left and one of those now meaning right, okay? Now, um, why would we write it like that, okay? I think I have a pretty good explanation here. So let me give you why I think we write it like that. Math is universal, correct? Like if you lived in any other country in the world, they, you, the math that they teach is the same because math is math, right? It's the same for everybody. And if you, if you lived on a different planet, I would argue that you could learn the same math and it would still apply, all right? And so up and to the left, up and to the right, that's English, correct? And so for everyone who speaks English, that's great. They understand what you're saying. But if I was to take this, y goes to infinity as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity and as x goes to positive infinity, someone who didn't speak English could still understand that. If I was doing this math in Argentina or Japan or uh, yeah, anywhere, um, 
people would still understand what that means. So that this brings like the universal nature of the math into it. Okay, so that's why we want to write it like that. Okay, so let's learn about the other combinations here that we could have. Um, let me see if I can go. Yep, I can go that way. Good. All right, so now let's do an even degree negative leading coefficient, okay? So we have for our first example here, this first one is in standard form. So I'm going to say that that one is degree of four. Standard form again, remember we look at just the biggest exponent. So the biggest exponent I see there is four and therefore it is degree four. The next one here is in factored form. So factored form, remember I do not look at all the exponents of X. Or sorry, I do not look at the biggest exponent of X. I look at uh, the sum of all the exponents of X, correct? Now, in this case, I have an X squared out front. And so since that is an X there out front, I am going to count that exponent of X. So that's a two for this first one. Two plus three. And then I'm gonna argue that this one, the third parentheses has an exponent, oh, it's actually the second parentheses. Uh, I'm going to argue that it has an exponent of 1. Does anybody disagree with that? Good, because it's right. So if something does not have an exponent, we know that's kind of an invisible exponent of 1. So 2 plus 3 plus 1 here gives us a degree of 6, adding all those exponents together. Once again, in this case, I'm counting that exponent of x in front because there's an x there, whereas on the previous one, when we had that this 1 half over here, there was no x there, and therefore I do not count it, okay? So we only count it if it's an x. Okay, so both of these are even degree, and then can you see that on both of these, we have a negative leading coefficient, correct? So in front there, we have a negative, and so that's gonna be um, down to the left and down to the right. So those are both down. So for the evens, they're either going to be both up if they're positive or both down if they're negative. If we were to draw a graph here, which we are, we're going to go down to the left and down to the right. And once again here, when we're talking evens, I always think back to parabolas. I know we didn't have an example of a degree two here, but a degree two, if it was negative, would still be in this category, correct? And I think you guys know, what do negative parabolas look like? Well, they kind of go, they're upside down like this, right? And But they're going down to the left and down to the right. So if you know that about the, the parabola, about the quadratic when it's negative, then that also applies to degree 4, 6, 8, and 10. Is it going to be more complicated in the middle than a parabola? Yes. As we get higher degrees, it gets more complicated, but the general shape is down to the left, down to the right. All right, let's go ahead and translate this to our fancy math speak here. So if you guys could take a look there and see if, just like we did before, see if you can translate it into these infinities. I'll go over it in, uh, in 30 seconds here, but I want to give you guys a chance to try it out. All right, so this one would be y goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. So I'd say that's down and to the left. They would both be negative. y negative would be down. x negative would be left. And then the next one, I have y negative, which is down again. And now x is positive because we're going to the right. A la derecha. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's switch over to the odd degrees here. All right, so for odd, again, we have to know about positive and negative. Let's uh, practice identifying the degree here. So we have one that is in standard form, no parentheses. So standard form, no parentheses, we only look at the biggest exponent. And so I would say for this one, that would be of degree three. 
We also have an example of the factored form here. So factored form, we have to add up all the exponents. Now I do have an X out front, so I need to count that one. It does not have an exponent, which really means it has an invisible exponent of one. So I'm gonna do one plus three plus five. That sounds like a degree nine. One plus three plus five. Um, cool, so those are both odd. As you can see in front of both of those, we have positive coefficients. And so these would both be odd positive, okay? What this one is gonna be is down to the left and up to the right. So what we're gonna see on these odd ones is that they, uh, it's gonna be different. So the even ones, they were either both up or both down. On these odd ones, we're gonna have one of each, okay? When we draw this graph, you can see that our arrows are gonna go down to the left and up to the right. Um, I set up for these one. I said for these ones um, that you should think quadratic, right? So a good way to remember these is thinking about quadratics or thinking about parabolas. So that'll remind you whether it's up and up or down and down, right? For the odd degrees, I actually um, would say the easiest way to remember of these ones is think linear. And by linear, I mean slope. Linear is actually first power. Is one an odd number? Yes, it is. And so linear, first power, y equals mx plus b, would fit into these categories of odd, okay? And if you have a positive slope on mx plus b, doesn't the graph kind of look like this? Starting down from the left and then going up to the right. This would represent a positive slope, correct? And so if you know that about linear, which I know you do, you now know that about the third power and the fifth power and the seventh power and the ninth power, okay? So just remember that whenever we're dealing with these odd powers, what if it was linear? What would a positive slope look like at the ends? What would a negative slope look like at the ends, okay? Um, and so once again, is it gonna be more complicated as we're in the middle? Yes, definitely. But um, at the end behavior, that's what it's gonna be. Okay, let's translate this into our fancy math speak here using the infinity infinidades. So I got y is going negative as x is going negative. That's down and left is matched up together. And then y is going positive as x is going positive. That would be up to the right. y positive is up, x positive is right. That's right. Okay, next up and last up for this table, we have odd degree negative leading coefficient. So again, we got an odd degree, but now we have a negative out front. So the first one here in standard form, we only look at the biggest exponent. The biggest exponent is five. The factored form with parentheses, we need to add up the exponents. I do have an X out front, so that's gonna count as one. I have a parenthesis with no exponent, so that will also count as one. And so I would say this one is also degree five. Remember factored form again, we need to add up the exponents. And this one is gonna go up to the left and down to the right. So it's kind of, it is the opposite of the previous. If we were to draw it, it would be going up to the left and down to the right with our arrows. Um, once again, think about slope, right? So isn't that what a negative slope y equals mx plus b would look like at the ends. Yes, it is. And so all the other odd degrees match up with that, okay? One more time, let's do our infinities here. You can try it out on your own. <clears throat> All 
All right, so for up to the left, I got y going to positive infinity as x goes to negative infinity. And then for the um, uh, other one, I got y goes to negative infinity for down as x goes to positive infinity for right. Okay. All right. So that's our end behavior. So anytime you're thinking about um, and, and this will actually be like the first five questions, I think, on WebAssign will be um, what's the end behavior, and you will have to describe it using these infinity symbols. So you can just take a look back at this page, at this table here, um, and that will be kind of your guide, okay? Also, though, when we're actually graphing these, which we're going to do on the next page, and you're wondering how I'm drawing my arrows, this table, again, is how I decide where I draw my arrows. It is based on what's the degree, and is the leading coefficient positive or negative, okay? Is the, the coefficient, is the degree odd or even? Is the leading coefficient positive or negative, okay? Okay, so let's go on to the next page. Oh, no. Okay, uh, it's not, I think I messed up that alignment there, but it's okay. I think it's correct on all the ones who's printed now. Um, all right. So next up here, we got uh, zeros. And so it's good enough here. We could say zeros are found by having, in the, having the graph in factored form by determining what would make the factor zero. Combining this with n behavior can give us a good sketch of the graph, OK? And then other thing we need to know about is multiplicity. Um, zeros that come from odd powered factors cut through the x-axis, OK? And then um, zeros that come from even powered factors bounce off the x-axis. So we'll talk about multiplicity as we go along here. Actually, we can, we can put some examples here. So odd power factors would be like x minus c to the first, which I'm not going to put the first power, or x minus a to the third. These would be odd powered multiplicities. On the other hand, if I had x minus b squared or x minus d to the fourth, those would be even powered factors. So that's how we determine the multiplicity, OK? All right, so I think we'll have time probably for two graphs here. So let's check that out. OK, so number one here, we're going to start off by identifying the degree and whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So number one here, what is our degree? Well, this looks like it's in factored form here. So we need to add up the exponents. I see that all of these exponents are 1. That 2 out front does not have an x with it, and therefore I do not count that one. And so if I add up those exponents, I'm getting a degree of 3. I see that 2 out front is positive. So I have degree 3 positive, OK? Now, already I can draw my arrows. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my arrows. If it's a degree 3 positive, I know it's going to go down to the left and up to the right. How do I know that? It's based on the chart we did on the previous page. And also using Mr. Barry's trick of if it's odd, just think linear. So this is what a positive linear graph would look like, correct? Down to the left and up to the right, increasing as it goes along. Next up, we have our zeros. So zeros are whatever makes each one of these little parentheses zero, OK? So you can usually do this in your head. It's usually the opposite of uh, whatever the number in there is. So for x plus 2, the, the 0 is at negative 2. For x minus 1, the 0 is at positive 1. And for x minus 2, the 0 is at positive 2. All right. The multiplicity, that's the exponent that, that is above the parentheses that that came from. So negative 2 came from the first power. So that's a multiplicity of 1. 1 came from the first power as well. So that's a multiplicity of 1. 2 came from the first power. So that's also a multiplicity of 1. So last decision here is cut or bounce. That is based on the multiplicity. Like we said here, the multiplicity, if it's 
odd, it's going to bounce. Or no, I said that wrong. Cut. If it's odd, it's going to cut. So all of these are going to cut. If it's even, it would have bounced if the multiplicity was even. Not the zero itself, the multiplicity. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw these zeros. So I have a zero here at negative two. I have a zero here at positive one. I have a zero here at two. So I have my zeros written down. I have my end behavior written down. And so now I'm ready to draw the graph. I'm going to start at the far left arrow. I need to go through every one of those x-intercepts, and then I should end up at the far right arrow, OK? Now, cut through means when you hit that x-intercept, which in this case is going to be all of them, we're going to switch from bottom to top or top to bottom. Whatever side, think of the graph as being cut in half at the x-axis, and we're going to switch to the other side. So when I come through this first x-intercept, I switch from the bottom half of the graph to the top half of the graph. As Drake would say, I started from the bottom, now I'm here. Okay, okay, Drake. All right, cool. That was Mike Trout's like walk up music for a few years. That's the only reason I know him. All right, so now we're gonna turn around. We gotta hit the other x intercept, so we're gonna go through it again. So now I've switched from the top half of the graph back down to the bottom half of the graph. I gotta turn around one more time, get through that last x intercept. And I'm going to switch again from the bottom half of the graph to the top half. And then I end up at that far right arrow. Fantastic. OK, let's do one more. But I actually I want to jump down here and do number three. So let's do number three, and we'll get some more uh, later. All right, so number three here, we'll do our degree. So I have an exponent, right? I have an x out front. So in this case, I need to count that one. So one plus two plus three for my degree is going to be six. This is in factored form. So I added them up, so it's six. OK, zeros. Now, oh wait, I can do my end behavior. 6 and positive, according to my chart, is up to the left, up to the right. My zeros, OK. So I have a 2x out front here. Anytime you have the x in front as a GCF, you will always have a 0 at 0. If you think about it, what makes 2x equal 0? Well, if I divided both sides by 2, that means that x equals 0. So it's a little different than the adding or subtracting where it gets switched. If it's multiplying by a number like 2, it is 0. That's multiplicity of 1. Since that's odd, it's going to cut. And the multiplicity, again, is the exponent where it came from. My next 0 will be at negative 3. Remember, x plus 3 would be negative 3. That's a multiplicity of 2. And this will be our first bounce, since it's even since that one was squared, OK? Last one is going to be a positive 1, which will be multiplicity of 3, which means it's going to cut. Multiplicity, again, coming from that exponent. OK, so I got negative 3 here. I got 0, and I got 1. So I'm going to label all those. I'm going to put a little b under this negative 3 for now, just to remind me that that's the bouncing one, OK? All right, so what does bounce mean? Once again, think about the graph as being like top half versus the bottom half. And instead of switching sides like I do on a cut, a bounce, I'm going to stay on the same side. So I'm coming from the top. Whoa, what happened there? Try that again. I'm coming from the top, I bounce off. And I'm still up top. If I were coming from the bottom, it would like bounce off the ceiling and come back down, stay underneath, OK? So whatever side you were on, top versus bottom, stay on that side. Now I'm going to hit these other, oh man, I'm going to hit these other two. That's not good. And I'm going to cut through, which means now I'm underneath the x-axis. When I go through the one at zero, I switch sides from top to bottom. Then I come back up, I switch sides from bottom to top. 
So there's my graph, okay? It is underneath the x-axis from zero to one only. 